Compliance and Operational Security, Chapter 1. First of all, we'd like to see what the exam objectives are for this topical area. And the way to sort of characterize all the content of this chapter, we're looking at people controls and physical controls. So first of all, we want to make sure that we totally understand the foundation of information security, which relates to confidentiality, integrity, and availability, the famous CIA. Also, a big component of information security management is risk. And we want to talk about the related concepts and mitigation factors in that area. Also, the most important objective of information security is not technical. It's making sure that all the workforce and users of your information systems are very aware and well-trained on the topics of information security. Also, if a bad event occurs, you need to be prepared to respond properly. So we're going to take a look at incident response. And also, you have to be familiar with environmental controls, which would be the physical protection of your computing environment and building. Additionally, we want to take a look at business continuity. If you encounter something such as a bad hurricane, flood, God forbid, an airplane flying into your office buildings, how do you keep the business rolling in the event of a disaster? Let's take a look at the agenda for this chapter. First of all, we want to start with the foundation of information security. We want to look at concepts and objectives. A key cornerstone in any information security program is identifying where you're at risk and determining practical cost-effective ways to mitigate that risk. We also want to look at the four main categories of information security controls to categorize how we actually protect ourselves from these various risks. The foundation of any information security program is telling people what needs to be done. And that would include policies, procedures, baselines, and guidelines. Now, most of those types of documents are usually good cures for insomnia, so we also want to bring it down to the grassroots level, and that's where security awareness and training, probably the most important investment you can make in information security success. We want to take a look at those areas. If the bad event occurs, we need to be able to effectively respond. Also, this may be associated with a criminal event. We have to support evidence gathering, make sure we don't blow the case for the prosecution if it leads to that. Physical and environmental security. We have to protect the building and what's in the building. The most important assets of all are your people. If the bad event occurs, such as a flood, power outage, tornado, act of terrorism, we have to be able to promptly recover the systems, keep the business going. That's where business continuity and disaster recovery planning is so important. At the end of each chapter, we'll give you the opportunity to review our free practice tests, and also we'll remind you about some of the key points you have to be aware of for the Security Plus exam. First question, what is information security? Why do we need it? Let's look at four very important strategic objectives. This is why we do information security. First of all, protecting valuable information assets. They can be in any form. They can be on computers. They can be on paper. They can be in people's heads. Privacy of individuals. You want to make sure that organizations are taking good care of private information about you, your health records, anything that if disclosed to the wrong individuals could get very messy. A close corollary to protecting the privacy of individuals is protecting the legal position of the organization. And this could be relating to regulatory laws, such as Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA, also regulatory guidance from the credit card industry, such as the payment card industry data security standard, and also any contracts that are issued that would affect your organization. And finally, especially for publicly held organizations, your public image. The public image of the organization is very important. One of the things, if you have a bad public image, it could affect stock prices, which could uh, hurt the long-term viability of an organization. Let's go back to the triad, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. These are the three main protection objectives of any type of information assets we have. Always remember these three whenever you're dealing with why we need to do information security. As I mentioned earlier, risk is a very important component in driving the need for information security. And depending on your organization, if you're publicly held, if you're government related, you look for authority documents. These are the guidance that affect your governance, risk, and compliance. If you had to boil down the two main drivers for information security, it would be risk and compliance, and governance is the way that you address those in your organization. To provide proper benchmarks to determine 
if you're doing enough information security. We're going to take a look at several prominent information security and audit frameworks. First of all, at a relatively high but comprehensive level, we're going to look at the control objectives for information and related technology. This is the COBIT. This is a very important guide, especially for regulatory compliance to U.S. laws such as Sarbanes-Oxley, very heavily revered to by the IT audit profession. Another high-level area of guidance is from COSO. That's the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations. This is sort of like the motherhood and apple pie. They usually have eight to ten high-level objectives that relate to things such as information security and privacy. A key area of international standards affecting information security is the ISO IEC 27000 series. This is the only recognized international standard set for information security.